Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm looking at a co-production of NASA and Virtual Heroes, the people that brought you America's Army. Yes, the first-person shooter that was uh, produced in collaboration with the America, the U.S. Army, designed to get people to want to join the armed forces. Well, this is doing for that what people did for space, except that actually a lot of people would love to go to space, whereas not many, not so many people want to join the army. Anyway, regardless, uh, this is a kind of interesting one, and, and I'm really putting this up as a, a kind of contrast to the, the astronaut simulator, because uh, this is a whole lot more polished. And, you know, if you want to be an astronaut on EVA, this is a pretty good place to go, and it's completely free. In the year 2020, NASA began construction of a lunar base near the Shackleton Crater at the South Pole of the Moon. Now in 2025, utilization of solar energy in regolith has allowed the lunar base to be self-sustaining. And I can't read the last sentence lunar because things are going too fast. Research Team Beta, over. Copy that, Beta. Go ahead. We're returning from the field. We should be back at the outpost in less than five minutes. Over. Oh, and I noticed they put the, the Earth Copy at the right that, position. We'll see you in five minutes at NASA. Uh oh. What? What was that? Uh oh, I think we're having some communication. Yeah. Looks like we got hit by something. Maybe a meteor strike. Smashed up the solar ring. Something terrible. <laughs> we got the living quarters wax port system. There we are. We need your help. We're running out of oxygen work. We need to get that solar ray online and let the port system repaired ASAP. All the supplies you need should be in the equipment shed. Readings show the area around the life support system is too hazardous to approach on foot. So make sure to deploy repair robots. Please hurry. Copy that. En route. Copy that. En route. Or en route. Whatever he says. Anyway, I have... What I am is that I'm an astronaut in my spacesuit. This is a, this is one of these concept spacesuits. By the way, you'll notice that it's like the back door on the on the rover they had. This is actual real NASA concept where uh, the uh, spacesuit backpacks are essentially attached to the back of the spacecraft. Anyway, so I've got to go over to this, and I'm going to need a robot because it said that I cannot approach the uh, life support area because it will be hazardous. It's not really, they don't really explain why, whether it's like full of radiation or perhaps the gas shooting out is toxic. Maybe they get some sort of toxic process, but then again, I am wearing an EVA suit. I don't know. It's for gameplay reasons. Instead of having to, you know, instead of, instead of letting me just walk up to things and fix them, I have to make sure I also use these uh, little robot packages, which are kind of cool. It's like a suitcase with a robot attached. Wait till you see this. I'm just trying to move over here because the robot has a limited range and I'm trying to put it like halfway between some of these connectors and the life support area. This is about as close as I need to get. I mean, I don't know how close I'm allowed to get, to be honest. But there's my robot. Johnny5 is alive. It has a little welder on there because, as we know, in space, everything can be fixed with a welder. So I'm going to actually just start repairing these cable conduits right here. So, the each damaged part basically has a little gear diagram above it. Yellow is obviously not so damaged. This is going to take about 20 seconds in total to repair. Red is quite a lot more damaged and will take a, a bit more to repair. Okay, so I've successfully repaired that. And there's another one there. So just, uh, you know, drive up to it. This is the cable that takes the power to the life support thing, which... Uh, of course, processes the life support, which sends the stuff to the base. I'm not sure why. Oh, oh, mini game, mini. <sighs> Crikey. Okay. Yeah, that was a pretty. That was pretty embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> I think my mouse is usually set to have like I have like three inches of movement in my mouse, so usually <laughs> I don't do so well in these games. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So I can repair components in this, and the. The various buildings have a nice... Okay, try do it properly this time. Yes! So I've saved four seconds by performing that correctly. So you'll see there's a nice big sign that tells me just how efficient the module is. Whereas, where efficiency really means broken or, you know, non-brokenness. I don't know. Because surely 25% efficiency with some power would be good. Who knows. Okay... So here's something else I can fix. Now the red ones, there are parts that are red. They're going to take a lot longer to repair. And in some cases, it's faster to... Oh, quick minigame. 
Don't mess it up. There's, and then get this one. Yes, excellent. Saving six seconds. So the red ones will take longer and it's gonna be faster to actually put in a replacement part. So there's like a broken part on the ground there. Uh, in fact, th it looks like the thing there, see there's an exclamation mark. That is where there is a missing part. Okay, that's one of those. And don't mess it up, yes. So if there is a missing part, you can't just repair it. You have to actually go in there with a hand and plug in the part. So I have to go and get another robot. I have to get the counterpart to uh, to welding bot, and that would be grabby bot. So I'm just uh, bouncing across the moon. I bet you thought that bunny hopping was something that started out with Quake. No, bunny hopping actually uh, was a real technique that was developed by astronauts to move efficiently across the surface of the moon. And, you know, because this game is realistic, bunny hopping is, is quite good here as well. It's totally not because it's an Unreal Engine game, which, you know, bunny hopping is something that everyone does. Can't unfortunately bunny hop with the robot in my arms. Because the, the robot would just have too much enjoyment. I have to wander across the moon incredibly slowly. Anyway, it's interesting that they put this in Shackleton Crater. So Shackleton Crater is a crater near the pole of the moon. And some parts of the crater are perpetually in shadow because it sits, the crater is so close to the pole that the rotation of the moon never carries some parts of the crater into sunlight. Obviously, this is clearly some bit on the edge of the crater or a, a crater near it or something because we've got sunlight in here. But yeah, Shackleton Crater is a great candidate. Oh, look, it's a Hitler bot. No, just kidding. <laughs> this is this is Grabby Bot. Hello, Grabby Bot. You're going to help me grab things. Anyway, uh, it, because the crater is perpetually in shadow, it's theorized that there may be, in fact, water ice in there. And water ice is something that is presumed to be lacking elsewhere on the moon. Okay, see, I'm trying to find a part here. That's the CO2 filter. Pick that up, and then I'm going to put that back in there. So reverse out, target my thing, and insert, and off it goes. So, the moon is a very, very dry place, it is believed. And to make rocket fuel, you generally need hydrogen. Hydrogen is an incredibly useful part of, of efficient rocket fuels. And uh, oxygen is everywhere because you can just take the rock and you know, crack it down. Essentially, a lot of the lunar material is things like alumina, which is uh, aluminium and oxygen. And if you heat that up, melt it, electrolyze it, you get oxygen out. You also get aluminium, which is useful for construction. Okay, and but, but I need to, hold on, pick this up and plug it in there. So anyway, yeah, rocket fuel, you tend to want hydrogen and hydrogen on Earth is largely bound up in water, right? Water is, is a very useful way to store hydrogen because it has a relatively high melting point compared to many other forms of hydrogen, let's see. Okay, so what is this? This is an oxygen generator. I'm not sure what it's doing to generate oxygen, but one presumes they've got some sort of closed process chemical thing going on there. So I'm gonna head around the other side to get it. Anyway, uh, the idea is, anyway, if you can find water, then it is a huge boon to your base building. You can make fuel from it, you can make uh, oxygen, you can provide water for your crew. And therefore, Shackleton Crater, near the south pole of the moon, is an excellent choice for a potential lunar base. Uh, it's obviously named for Ernest Shackleton, the great British explorer who led a... Well, he led an unsuccessful expedition, but it was actually one of those amazing... Oh, wait a second, gotta drop this, cancel, oh, no, 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 come back, cancel, okay, gotta drop what I'm using, using the right button, so it just drops it on the surface, pick this one up, oh, wow, and I've just driven over my part, I hope I haven't broken it, and I just, I'm, I'm pulling this out because it's kind of orangey and therefore it might be faster to replace, I think I might have made a tactical error here, come on, grab that, okay, Yes, there we go. Yes, Ernest Shackleton, when he tried to go to the South Pole, he uh, his ship got stuck in ice flows and eventually sank. They were there for months on the ice. And eventually he and a bunch of crew took a small boat and managed to navigate north to, like, Georgia, where they, where they found uh, a bunch of whalers. 
and uh, were able to save everyone. It was like one of those great triumphs of, uh, you know, endurance or whatever. Uh, even if the even if the quest to go to the South Pole was at that time unsuccessful, so Shackleton's one of those guys that's you know generally uh, remembered with some reverence as an explorer. Okay, so now we got to replace this part. Okay, we get you see we have uh, timers at the top. It's showing you O2 total is how much oxygen we have in the base. EVA is how long I guess I have on EVA before. Well, I guess that's my oxygen supply or something before I have to come back in. Now, because this is a game, they uh, don't want to have the base die because they don't have enough oxygen. So the consequences of failure are that you have to come inside and explain yourself for being terrible. I guess what happens is that because of all the failures, you can't just pretend that they were all fixed and now you have to compile a bunch of paperwork and then several days of... Uh, potential research time are lost, or something like that. Either that or the really smart people have to come out and do the work on fixing this. Thank you, you have now placed that. And we're up to 62% efficiency. I will point out that these, uh, you know, spurting these, like, uh, gas jets or something coming out, they look nothing like what gas jets would actually look in a vacuum. Just you're putting that out there, games don't tend to do vacuum physics particularly good because, of course, it doesn't look uh, it doesn't look the way we expect, right? We expect gas jets to come out and be turbulent because they are uh, escaping into an atmosphere which in which we live, right? We know what things look like in an atmosphere. In vacuum, in vacuum, jets tend to come out and they go very quickly into a laminar flow because there's no gas to interact with. They just tend to be straight out jets. Oh no! Oh no! Difficulty 6. I'm doomed. Got 1, got 2, got 3, got 4, come on! Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, man, messed that up. You, you, ah! Oh. Okay, never mind. There we go. Okay, next! Where's the next one there? Get in there and start repairing it. This is the Oxygen 2 Nitrogen Controller. Yeah, I was reading a lot about life support systems on spacecraft. There's quite a few interesting different reactions. Oh, hold on. Get this, because of course we got to do this fast. We have 25 minutes initially. 8 seconds saved. And, and this, I'll point out, does work in multiplayer mode. So you can get a whole bunch of people together and try to fix the base as quickly as possible. Uh, or you can just use the text-to-speech chat box and make your uh, characters sing or things like that. That is a particular subculture that I've never really had much time to experience. Okay, see this one's going to take a minute to repair. So I really need to... Ah, oh, no! Okay, I really need to get these things to work. Uh, there is only one scenario in this, as far as I know. I mean, maybe there's way, maybe there's mods, but the default scenario you get from this on Steam is basically fix the oxygen or fix the life support as quickly as possible. There, ten seconds saved. Uh, there, there's no other things to do. There's no explore other parts of the moon, which is you know, something of a shame. Uh, it would really have been nice to see a lot more developed on this. The game was originally released in 2010. It is completely free, so you know that's good. So I'm not going to say you're terrible because you only have one level. I'm going to say I'm disappointed that you only have one level. But I totally understand this is a free title on Steam. Uh, now if you want... Oh no! Difficulty level 8. Oh! Oh! God, I messed up the easiest one! What? Oh, my mouse skills are just terrible! I must be suffering from lack of oxygen or something. Maybe I should pretend to, that I'm using the mouse in a spacesuit. I also think it's interesting that the, the standard, you know, tool for fixing things in space is a welder. So now we have all that fixed up, I need to get power back to it. And this power cable here that I'm running over, I think that's mostly fixed, but there's a solar panel. You see, there's uh, two solar generators, which are even further from the habitation module, I will point out. One wonders why they're so far from the habitation module, since they're quite happy to put the dangerous life support thing right next to the hab module. But the solar panels are further away. Are they more dangerous? Are they, you know, likely to focus the rays of sunlight on the 
something and kill it? I don't know, are they expecting the solar panels to rise up against their human masters and claim dominance? Okay, with the wrench, I can go up to this control panel. This is the one tool you need the wrench for. You go there and you bring it down. I don't know why you need a wrench to do that because it's a TV screen. Are you hitting the TV screen with the wrench? I don't know. <laughs> if you like, if you like this, if you played this to death, you might want to seriously look at Take On Mars. Now, Take On Mars, it has this really nice probe game, and it's a very relaxing explore Mars with space probes and rovers and stuff game. But they've been... The last two years almost, they seem to have been just working on this Expedition 1, which is essentially astronauts. And there's a little bit of survival stuff. It's still very much in alpha. I'm hoping that at E3 they'll announce some awesome new features or something, but... It does let you build out bases on the moon, it lets you mine stuff, it lets you convert the, you know, soil into stuff that you can use to grow, you know, plants and... Oh, wait a second, do this. Discover... D difficulty level server. Got it. Come on, five, four, three... Don't mess it up. Yes, 11 seconds. That's a... Wow, that's good. Get that one, that one. That one. Come on. Don't fail me now. 3.2 seconds. One, two, three. Point two seconds. And I saved 13 seconds. That is a good result. So yeah, take on Mars. Oh god, nine. Just too much too many broken bits. Obviously not real circuit boards, because if you've looked at modern printed circuit boards, the circuit traces are so ridiculously tiny, you need a magnifying glass to see them. Oh, okay, this is easier. Let's see. Just don't mess it up. Come on! There we go, four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one! <gasps> yes! Those feel good, actually, when they get them done, but I, I, it'd be nice to have that on, like, a touch screen or something. Somebody should port this to iOS. This would totally work on iOS. Okay, so now we have power, so oxygen will be fully restored in four minutes. So, assuming nothing explodes, and sometimes things do that. Sometimes other bits fail. So I'm going to start bring, bringing the other solar panel online. So once again, grab the wrench to run over and hit the TV screen. There we go. I, I, I like the fact that we're able to watch TV on the moon. You know? <laughs> like, let's just have a TV so when we're outside we can see all this cool stuff. I do like also that they got the moon and the sun more or less in the right places. That they've got the... Or sorry, the, not the moon. The, the Earth! The, the moon is obviously in the right place. It's right below me. But you, the moon, the, the sun and the earth are opposite each other in the sky. Oh god, I'm terrible. Uh, you know, in the face, face of the, the face of the earth is correct. Okay, let's start welding the solar panel. You know, welding is actually one of those things that hasn't really been perfected. At least welding in space. Although this is technically on the moon, it might be easier. I'd be more worried about gases, like melt. You dip. Oh, wait a second. Do this. Do, 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 down this way. Number nine. Come on. Six. Oh. Oh, darn. Yeah, I, I would be concerned about if you were using a welding torch, like the gas, the metal vaporizing and depositing itself on the spacesuits and things like that. So, I think welding torch in a vacuum seems like a really bad idea, but maybe, maybe someone will figure that out. Obviously, you know, these kind of uh, manufacturing tools will have to be solved for, for actual long-term space construction. They have done welding in zero-g, like the, the experiments have happened, but the welds tend to be weaker. And a bigger problem is that if you have two pieces of metal in contact in a vacuum, they will actually sometimes spontaneously weld over time, and this has actually caused failures in spacecraft. It's, you know, if you think about it, the pieces of metal are touching, and the atoms at the surface are just like, oh hey, other atoms like me, I should just be welded to you, right? We should be the same piece of material. Okay, there we go, do that. 
This one. This one sucks. Round the corner. Straight down. Oh! I, how did I fail on a straight section? So, you know, that's a whole separate area of research is making things not fail. Like I do. Failing on my circuit tracing here. Come on. I'm not sure about soldering in, in zero G. Oh, excellent. That's been done. So now that's fixed, I need to reconnect my... I need to reconnect the thingy. So I'm going to drop this welding torch on the ground. We're going to grab this. And reconnecting this is one of those jobs that only the astronaut can do. The robots can do a lot of the repairs and a lot of the carrying and stuff, but this is one of the ones the astronaut absolutely has to do. He has to walk over there, and the hard part is just selecting this because you have a limited turn radius. Oh, no, I gotta get in closer, I guess. Six minutes. We're, we have six minutes left, but we're at 90% oxygen. I do believe the, the day will be saved and I will be able to have an extra ration tonight. We have power going down there. Now we have one more node to fix. Grab that and then let's hightail it over there and finish this repair. Actually, I think we're not going to finish this repair before we've actually saved the base. 99%! Master alarm is off. Oxygen flow is returning to nominal. That was close. Oxygen flow is normal and the levels appear to be stable. We'll need to check the repairs again, but this should hold for now. Thanks. And yay, I have saved the day. A fully restored oxygen to the lunar settlement and that is Moonbase Alpha. It's free on Steam. It's worth checking out if you feel like playing like an astronaut. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.